So you know concrete is very strong in compression but very weak in tension. To overcome this weakness, we use steel rods inside concrete. And that's how we call it as reinforced concrete beam or column. In this lecture, I will talk about material properties and stress strain behavior of both steel and concrete. This is the third part of lecture series on Eurocode 2 concrete design. Click on this side of the screen to have a look at other two parts. Hey friends, if you are new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at University of East London. This channel is about engineering and life skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. The properties of concrete now, British standards, they use cube tests in Eurocode. We have cylinder test. We have to work out this FCK after 28 days. Now, the cylinder strength is approximately 0.8 times the cube strength. Concrete is strong under compression. So, concrete is an artificial stone that is durable and it has got aggregate cements. And the cement is a kind of glue that keeps the concrete together. And this is the table which shows different grades of concrete and the most common ones are the C25 and the C30 concrete. The so first bit shows the cylindrical strength and the second bit is I think you it gives you FCK specified compressive strength and then FCK cube is obviously higher. FCM is the mean strength and FCTM is the tensile strength. So you can see that here it is roughly 10% of its compressive strength. The yield strength of reinforcing bar, its FYK or yield strength is 500 Newton per millimeter square. It has got different ductility classes. So here we have comparison of concrete and steel. From a strength perspective, strength and tension of concrete is really poor. Almost certainly you will ignore its strength. On the other hand, steel is really very strong. Strength in compression, very good in compression. Equally, steel is very good in compression as well, but buckling might happen. The good thing about concrete is that buckling doesn't happen. So it's quite good material. In terms of steel, I mean, certainly it's strong and thin. So that's why buckling happens. Strength in shear is fair and strength in steel is all right. Durability is fine. In steel, it corrodes if it is unprotected. And fire resistance is good. For steel, fire resistance is poor. I mean, these days we have lots of good protections. Ductility, on the other hand, of concrete is really poor because it's a brittle material. So when you apply loading, it will just fail suddenly without warning. On the other hand, steel will give you very good ductility. When you apply loading, it will fail gradually, giving you sufficient warning. Eurocode 2 is used mainly for design of concrete structures. Eurocode 2 has got the simplified parabolic stress strain curve for concrete, where you can see that vertical is the stress and horizontal is strain, and FCD is your design compressive strength, and FCK is characteristic cylinder strength that you determine from cubes. So, design is always going to be less, it's a kind of safety factor. And then, strain is this one. 0.002 for concrete for most of the concrete it's almost 0.002 and the ultimate strain is 0.0025 now how do we measure it uh, simply we apply load to cube or cylinder we attach this strain gauge I and mean, especially for cylinders in the middle and then we measure the uh, strain so strain is change in length uh, per unit length the key thing to remember here is this FCD, which is 0.85 times FCK over uh, gamma C, where gamma C is the partial, partial factor. So we will use this design compressive strength. And again, a stress strain diagram for reinforcement. For reinforcement, it's FY. Again, this is uh, FYD means design yield strength. I mean, certainly it is less than the actual characteristic strength of steel and then I will go through different parameters this is the idealized stress strain diagram for reinforcing a steel not the structural steel Eurocode uses equivalent rectangular stress uh, distribution where X here now you have this width of the beam this is a cross section of the beam and the depth of the beam depth of the beam is always counted from middle of the reinforcement to the top and then you have neutral axis this is ultimate strain 
0.0035 and this is the strain in the steel euro code 2 it uses the simplified rectangular stress distribution which means that the force and tension is only concentrated at the center of this steel bar the entire tensile force is taken by a steel bar okay i mean normally you will have a behavior like this that is linear behavior all right so so tension we don't have any tension for concrete entire tension is taken by this steel bar and euro code approach is to use in real life it would be something like this it will not be even triangular so the euro code approach is to approximate it like a rectangle and at the center we have this force in concrete and s is a distance from this concrete block to the top which is 0.8 x where x is the distance from neutral axis to the top fiber and normally we take x as 0.45 d for a ductile failure it means that the section is under reinforced now this is very important i'm not going into detail of these three types there are three types under reinforced section balanced section and over reinforced section if value of this x is equal to 0.45 d then it's going to be balanced if it is more than 0.45 d then it's going to be over reinforced so we don't want over reinforced uh, section the reason is that over reinforced section will become brittle and we want to avoid this brittle failure so keep this thing in mind fcd is 0.85 times fck divided by this factor which is 1.5 this s distance is the depth of the block and then this is s by 2 and z is the distance from fc to fs and the cover how much cover should be provided the cover is necessary for fire resistance it is necessary for durability and it is necessary for bond strength now what does it mean by cover by cover we mean that you have this concrete beam and then you have this steel reinforcement you sometimes you use steel reinforcement at the top as well and then you have this stirrup as well the cover is this distance from steel or this distance from a stirrup to the end so normally it's taken between 20 to 25 millimeter and the purpose of this cover is to protect steel from fire and the second is uh, for does it matter yes does it matter if the structure is different like in case of beams columns and slabs yes different structures will have different cover for for beams it's normally between 20 to 25 millimeter but for column for column we keep the same as well but it depends on what kind of fire resistance is required if a higher fire resistance is required then the cover is going to be higher basically it depends directly it di it's directly involved with the fire resistance yes the higher the fire resistance the higher the cover yes and also it is to protect the reinforcement and it increases the bond strength between concrete and steel as well i mean imagine if steel bars are being exposed the chances are that they will not have proper bond with concrete so for proper bonding it is necessary that there should be some kind of cover if cover is not there then the bars are exposed then it will not perform to the satisfactory level and if bars are exposed again they could be exposed to water there will be some kind of durability issues thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for more practical insights into structural engineering and beyond until next time stay curious